Okay, good morning, everyone. We, uh, um, I don't know if I mentioned in the other class about uh, how the uh, pace of the class is going to be. Okay, so uh, if you can, I'm going to actually put it over here. So um, if, uh, say, <clears throat> If this is the progress that we're going to go throughout the semester, okay, and this is going to be the amount of information you're going to be receiving, okay, so this is the amount of information you're going to be receiving per lecture. This is the progress through the semester, okay? This is how it's going to be. Okay, oh, forget about the last one. I don't know why I drew the last one. Um, so it's going to be like this. It goes up like that. It goes up like that, okay? Which means we are here now. The information is coming very slowly. I want you to understand the concepts and stuff like that. Then we start and we get to the halfway through the semester. This is halfway through the semester. And then suddenly it's going to go like that. So be patient and enjoy the time and try to understand the concept. The complexity of the language, the syntax, everything is going to kick in soon, OK? But be patient, all right? But um, I love it that I see uh, students are eager to uh, uh, kind of, um, what should we call it, uh, um, asking me to uh, rush up a little. <laughs> and. Uh, like, Give us some more information, syntax, and stuff like that. Here we are going to stop. Wait, wait for it. Deep breath, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll start. Okay. So uh, let me pause the recording. I'm going to set a few things up over here, and then uh, we are going to start. Uh, the things you need to do: you need to all be logged into your computers in front of you. Okay. So when I tell you we're going to start the quiz, we'll start the quiz uh, because. For some reason, I thought it's a lecture today. I put it wrong in my calendar. I didn't put the L at the end to know it's a lab. So um, I didn't come with my baskets. Because I didn't come with my baskets, what you are going to do, you're going to lay your cell phones over here orderly like that when we are doing the quiz. So the, the cell phones are going to go one by one over here. So I can see that you have your cell phones. And so on. So uh, log into your systems. Uh, and make sure you have Notepad++ running. So when the time comes, we're uh, looking at me in a way. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. 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 We're going to have any programming uh, today for your quiz. It's going to be all multiple choice, but you open it just in case because I didn't design the quiz. I didn't know it's lab today. For some reason, I made a mistake. So I'm going to tell you if it's possible that you're not going to even use Notepad++, but have it open just in case. Now I'm going to pause the recording and we are going to. Uh, so what I did over here. Uh, number one, when you're booking an appointment, add a title so I know what is the time that I, I am not busy. Give me the URL of your repository if it's a code-related thing. So if your workshop is not working, something like that, and you need help with code, you give me the URL of your repository, and you make sure you push your... Uh, code into the repository so I can pull it and help you. Uh, questions now to this point before we begin? Suggestions? All right. So no questions? All right. So we, uh, we uh, this is, so this one is nothing. We don't need to. So last day we talked about uh, namespaces. We said namespaces are where we actually create uh, uh, namespaces where we, uh, uh, depending on uh, which 
partners or which team we are working on. Uh, we have our own spaces and we put our code inside our new space in case we create uh, uh, compound types. Uh, structure created, and if I'm in the cafeteria and I want to do food related stuff, I'm going to have a student created, and I don't want those students to, to, to collide because it's the same compound type. Uh, uh, the person with the talking stick, okay, microphone, are you ready? Okay, do you remember what a compound type was? If you have the answer, answer it. If not, you can pass it to the lady beside you. Compound type, remember what a compound type is? Compound type, we talked about it. You don't remember? It's a um, co um, composite of a data type. Very good translation. That's perfectly good. But uh, what does that mean? What does that mean? Okay. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. I'm going to take it to the front side and then we'll go. Anyways, so keep the microphone as we are ta asking the question. So, compound type. We said that if you create a type, something like integer, the type of a association, I asked what is of instantiation of instantiation. No. That's too deep. Creating something. That's all it means to create something. So when I say integer i, integer is the type, I instantiate it and I get i. When I say employee, EMP, employee is the type, EMP is the result of instantiation of employee. So essentially it means to create. We're all good with this? All right. Okay, so, so um, as we said before, when, when you are having the primitive type, like integer, double, float, primitive types are types that you cannot break it down into small pieces. They're the smallest piece of data type that you have. Compound types are types that you or someone else created out of other types. Like, for example, student over there. The first abstraction of the student over there has a student number and work experience. It's two different types. If you look at one is a compound type. It is created of two things. Or the student you see in the food name space is created out of, uh, uh, by the way, at the back of the, uh, end of, uh, like, Back there, can, can you see this? <laughs> Pardon me. Can I make it big? Should I make it bigger? Yes. Is it good now? All right. So, the student over here is created of two pri uh, primitive types: unsigned integer and double, and another compound type. Why is it compound? Because it's made of the 10,024 characters. It's not a primitive type, it's an array. Array is a composite type too because it's made up of so many things, right? So the student over here is made up of so many things. We said that unlike C language, C++, when you create a structure, a new type is born. You don't need to say struct student to make something out of it. Just student is enough to make something out of the student and we mentioned it over there. Anyways, so that's a compound. Okay, so compound types are, are created like that. So namespaces help us when we create compound types that share the same name and the result of different views of the same problem that compound type actually uh, <coughs> uh, uh, will not carry a conflict and everything's going to work properly. So that was the namespace. And we said. <coughs> uh, 
if we, are, we don't use using namespace something, we have to qualify the name of the namespace using what we call scope resolution, two columns, okay? So you put the namespace, scope resolution, then the name of the uh, uh, variable that you have inside the namespace. <coughs> um, next person with, uh, with microphone. Uh, Remember what was, actually forget it, let me just review. Let me just review, you don't have much time. Um, we'll, we'll talk, we'll, we'll use it afterwards. So, <clears throat> uh, we said that C in and C out are instantiation results of both uh, stream and stream. So we have a couple of classes. In IOT, remember, we created two instances. One instance out of O stream, we called it C out, and another instance out of I stream, In IO stream, in IO stream, header file. We're going to see how it happens. So they essentially become global variables, global objects. C out and C in are global objects that we can use everywhere uh, as we are going through them. That's that. So that was essentially what we went through, and then I gave you an example of. Uh, what encapsulation is, and we created a customer, and we showed how we can actually have, uh, 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 what shall we call it, uh, uh, functions created inside a customer and encapsulate that and behavior together. Yes? Uh, where do we use namespace something, and where do we use using Okay. <clears throat> when you are creating stuff, you write namespace everywhere. Anywhere you write a code, you write namespace, name of the namespace which you are in, the thing that you are in. And we are doing a role play. We are assuming Seneca is a company. Who are it? And expand, write the code in it. Do not include stuff in names. Just put the code in there. It's not going to cause much of trouble. Don't do that. Don't put namespaces inside. Don't include uh, header files inside the namespace. All those things are outside. So <clears throat> if you look at this thing, I have namespace SDDS in here. When you look at it, the header file and using namespace is outside. I only have the code inside the namespace, okay? So I'm going to show you an example of a module in two seconds, exactly what you're supposed to do in workshop two, okay? And over there, I'm going to explain exactly where you put namespace and where you put So I think that as easy as English word to say, when you are coding and creating stuff, you create namespaces. When you are in a consumer program, your namespace, then you don't create the namespace anymore. You are using the namespace. Main is using your code, therefore you create So that was kind of a I'm gonna go deep in it soon. And that brings us into modular programming. So as you see in my uh, uh, Solution today, I have two projects. One is the September 15th thingy. The other one is what I call modular. And if you look at it, in here I have a program that I think it was uh, an assignment for IPC 144, something like that. So this is uh, uh, a program that goes through a file uh, that is, the file is, A comma separated value of items, as you see, in a grocery store. So, the 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 the, the um, what do you call it? Not the UPC. The SKU. The SKU for the the SKU is the uh, 
number that, carry, that is carried for each item in a shop. So the SKU is 275. It's fresh fish. It's $12.34 and no taxes applied to it. This one is 386. Soft Kleenex. It's $45. $45 for Kleenex. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and it, it tax applies to it. It's just an example, right? So this program, uh, this non modular program, is a C program, as you see, that is written in C with everything. C as the fine statement and things like that, and uh, it has a pointer, a pointer that incorrectly we call it a, a, a global variable. This is not a global variable. Why it is not a global variable? Because from what we learned last time in this class, previous time in, cla in this class, when I do compile, uh, 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 <clears throat> when I compile an, an application, when the compiler runs, compiler runs the stuff in separate modules. So each module is compiled separately, correct? So when I put one global, what I call global variable in IPC inside 2.cpp, it's only global for 2.cpp. 1.cpp and 3.cpp won't see it. So essentially, it's a file scope variable, not a global variable. How to make it global, I'll explain, OK? But now, just keep that in mind. Why we call those things in IPC 144 global variables? Because we only had one file. And because we only had one file, the FPTR was accessible to all the functions that I had just, like, I, I just dropped everything in one file, unorganized, and I did it that way, which is not good. When you look at this thing, you will see that, when you look at this thing, you will see that essentially what we have in here is a combination of functions that do input and output. So um, get like this, uh, like this is item related. So these one are item related. And if I go through stuff that I have over here, there are functions that are not item related at all. Like for example, flush keyboard. I'm flushing the keyboard. That's not item related. That is flushing keyboard. Could be used for anything. Or I'm getting an integer, foolproof entry for an integer. That's not item related. So what I need to do is to organize this into modules. So the outcome of the organization of all these things into modules is this. I am right now changing this to C++, but don't think that what I'm doing is C++ only in C++. In C, you have modules too. You have separate files too in the language. This one, I'm just converting it to C++ so you see into C++. So now if you actually look at what I have done over here to convert those things to modules, this is what I have done. I created two modules and a main program. I owe tools for input and output stuff and item for the functions that are related to deal with items. And a main that uses everything, right? So essentially, I have three modules over here. Two modules to create namespaces in, one module to use it, all right? So that's that. So now, if I add these things to, the, to here, you will see how I, I dealt with it. So if you look at, for example, iotools.h, you will see that I first put compilation safeguards. Did we talk about compilation safeguards? No, we'll talk about it right now then. OK. How do we do compilation safeguards? Compilation safeguard is done using what we call preprocessor directives. Now, I have news for you, and I want you all to listen to me carefully. When you are writing a C++ program, you are using two completely independent languages. to do stuff before it compiles the code, okay? 
Do we understand what I'm saying? So as an example to what I was, what I'm saying over here, <clears throat> I'm gonna uh, mention something interesting that you, well, it might, you might find it interesting. So I'm, I'm not gonna go talk about this module now. I'm gonna go back to my uh, the teaching part of the thing that we have. Just imagine, I'm going to create two files over here. And this file is a text file. Okay, and in this text file, I'm going to call it uh, hehe.txt. Okay, and in this hehe.txt, I'm going to say include IO stream using namespace std int main and stop. Half of a I save this. Then I am going to add another file. Add new item. Another text file, and this one is going to be whoo.txt. Okay? In here, I'm going to say, see out. This is crazy. Return zero. And a closed curly bracket just for the heck of it. Right? When you look at these two files, if I put this one at the top and this one at the bottom, I have a program, right? But individually, they're garbage. They're not even C++ programs because they are TXTs, right? Look what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, so I'm going to close this one and close this one. In program, in here, I'm going to remove everything. I'm just going to say include he.txt he and in here I'm going to say include who.txt who and I compile and run. What does it mean? It means I to copy the context of a TXT line, poof, paste whatever in he.txt over there, right? Then the second line of include does whoo.txt. After they are done, compiler sees if there are any more hashtags. There is more hashtag because over there I had to include IO stream, right? So it goes actually copies after it does this, goes back again, and this time copies IO stream. Then again looks at it, more hashtags, keeps doing that. It won't compile. It keeps doing all the hashtags, which is conversation between you and the compiler. It does everything that it's supposed to do to make the code ready. When what is left is pure C++, that's when it's going to start compiling. Processor directors because they happen before the code gets compiled. Do we understand this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Okay, so this I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call this one uh, a crazy main. Dot cpp. So so you know when you say include, there's no magic. No lot is being included. To you were just asking the. Same thing. Identify. So you can literally go to the compiler, find out standard input output header file, select all, copy it, and paste it in your code is the same thing. Include is literally copy and paste. Literally. Yeah, of course. Line. Copy and paste, literally. If I put it reverse, of course it's not going to work. Ooh, wow. Of course, if I put it reverse, it's not going to work. Because 
if I put it reverse, of course it's not going to work. So when I say literally, I mean literally. What is he dot txt? It's this one, right? What is who dot txt? It's this one, right? If I put it reverse, what's going to It means, <laughs> so, so this is what's going to happen. Okay, okay. Yes. That was why I was asking. It was really sequential because it's just called the header file. Yeah, when you call, of course, it's exactly the same. So when you when you inc so what are header files for? Header files are for introduction. What do they have in there? They have declaration of different things. Declarate not declaration definition definition of different things. They have or prototypes of functions. So if you are creating a function. All the functions prototypes will be in F. When you include them, all become available. And then you can use each other in any order you want, as long as they are all introduced. So that's what the header file is. So that's only one of the commands, like define statement. Hashtag define, you did an IPC 144, you did that, right? means talking to the compiler before you do anything. Are we good with this down to this point? Are we OK with this? Now, there is a rule when you are creating a header file. So can somebody give me name of uh, something that I want to, that I'd like to have a header file for? Give me something. A module for something. What? Let's say, I, wanna, wanna, I don't want to cre create anything, just something. Give me. Uh, who has the microphone? Tell me, I want to create an object of love. Love? <laughs> is that what you say? Love it is. OK, so love. We want to define what love is, right? So this is what we are doing. That's good. That's, that's, that's good. Why not? So I need to create a module for love. So what do I do? I'm going to first create a header file for love. So I'm going to say add new item. Now, of course, it's going to be a header file. See, uh, a code, it's going to be a header file, it's going to be love.h. Okay, so that's the first one. Remove that pragma once thingy, we don't want to know that, that's too rich for our blood, that's op345. And then we're going to create a source file for it, and I'm going to say add new item, that's going to be love.cpp. These are not empty files yet. The empty module files is defined in a different way. So how do I actually convert this to something, an empty module to start implementing love? What do I do? First things first, you write this thing blindly. Just follow it as I tell you. I'll explain what they are. You don't need to understand it at this stage. Just see what is the formula, follow it. I'll explain what it is. If you understand it, fine. If not, blindly follow it. What do you write? You write hashtag. You are talking to the compiler. If not defined, then you put the name of the namespace you are supposed to program in in capital. What is our namespace? SDDS, underline. What is the name of the header file? Love, so you put capital, love, underline, H. Okay? You hit enter. Then don't retype. Copy that. What did I do? Copy that line and paste it at the bottom. Then change that if not defined to define. Then inside these two you write namespace, sdds, you open curly bracket, you close it. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an empty header file to start working on a love module. 
So you should do this blindly. If it's an employee, it's SDDS, employee underline H, define SDDS, employee dot H, namespace SDDS, and done. You must be able to do this with your eyes closed. Then you go to the CPP file of this. You include this, include love.h, and then namespace, SDDS, and you go like that. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is an empty CPP file to implement the love module. So when you want to create a module, blindly you do this, done, then you start thinking, what am I supposed to do? This part should require no thinking. You should do it like a robot. Do we understand this? Now why? Let's explain why, and I'm going to explain it once. If you understand it, perfect. If you don't, perfect. Okay? Just follow the instructions. Okay, so these are called, ladies and gentlemen, compilation safeguards. When I'm saying, listen to it once. Try to understand if you don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That it doesn't mean that I'm not. Uh, write an header file, write an empty module for car. And I'm not going to mention anything else. You need to tell me this is car.h, this is the content of car.h, this is car.cpp, this is the content of car.cpp, this is an empty module to implement car in it. Are we okay with this? All right, now why? The reason we are doing this is that header files, as you just mentioned, are a copy and paste, correct? So what happens if they are copied twice? Yes, take a look at the example that I gave you for compilation. I did not mention that uh, in, in, uh, in uh, the class that day, but let, let's, let me just show you something in here, some hidden thing that I did not talk about. So 3.cpp is including 2.header file, correct? Are we okay with this? 3.cpp is including 2.h, correct? Okay. 4.cpp wants to use 2, 1, 2, and 3. 4.cpp is not aware of how 3.cpp is using 2. It doesn't care. It just wants 3, correct? So without knowing, it includes 3.cpp, 2.cpp, and 1.cpp. Because 3.header file is already including 2.header file, without knowing 4 is including 2.header file twice, correct? And because of that, whatever you write over there will be duplicated. Although you are writing in an SDDS header file, but if you create a, a function for something, let's call the line in there, and your function line in SDDS will be repeated twice. What the heck? Why are you having two prototypes that are identical? What does it mean? Because of that fact, we should compiler to compile each header file only once, not twice. How do we do that? That's the magic behind it. The compilation safeguards. So, because compiler is the one that you put hashtag define, when the compiler defines something, you at the very first line of your header file, you are saying, if not defined, this statement. So, is this thing defined? Compiler says, no. Good. So, continue compiling. At the very first line after you compile, the, you define the exact same thing. You don't put any value for it to be defined. All we need for it is to be defined. That's all. So, is it not defined? Yes. Continue. Define. So immediately you define that, and it continues compiling everything and goes through it, and it's done. Correct? Now the second time you are including it, it hits the first one. Is this thing not defined? So, no, it is already defined. Therefore, it skips everything and will not compile it anymore. 
So with an if statement for the compiler, again, remember, two separate languages, two separate times running. The preprocess is running the double check. This header file is it already done? Yes, but it's not going to compile it. Because of this compilation safeguard, you include it 50 times, it won't happen. Only once it's going to get compiled. Are we good with this? All right, so that's the compilation things that we have done, so now we know it. And please uh, pass the microphone uh, to the beautiful lady beside you. Thank you. All right. Uh, so now I'm going to go to uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Yeah, in the module thing. Now. You saw that ginormous thing that we had with input and output stuff, and we had the, uh, and then we had the item.cpp, uh, and we had the functions that dealt with items. So what I will do, I will get all the all the function prototypes that are related just to input and output. I put it in an IO tools H header uh, file create safeguards for it, as I mentioned, okay, and, and create the namespace and put all the prototypes in there. One extremely important thing, never include, never include a header file inside another header file unless it's going to So, in this header file, when you look at it, there is no function of standard input output is called, correct? So, there is absolutely no need for me to include standard input output. So, don't do it. Always avoid just in case inclusions because an include is a copy and paste. You don't know how many thousands of lines of code you're adding to your source code for no reason. For a rookie programmer, an include is just a statement. But for a person with knowledge, they know that include means copy the entire file in here before you compile. Let's not give compiler a hard time, eh? Okay? So that's what we're going to do. And so we are not going to include a, a, anything in here. And that's my <coughs> uh, function prototypes. Then I get all those functions and I put it inside the First of all, we talked about header files in C++. If you are using C++, you at the end, and input output dot write CSD. C++ deals with it. Are we good? All right. Pardon? CPP file. Yeah. But you are including standard input output because you are using. I don't know where it is, but I'm sure that we are using some something in here. Yeah. yeah, we are using scanf. We are using all this good stuff, right? And then you include your header file. Remember, always custom header files come after standard header files. So header files from the system is always at the top. Then you put yours at the bottom. Okay, because you don't want your code to influence the library codes. You know that this is going to copy and paste your code over here. You don't want it to be at the top of <laughs> IO stream. You always want it to be after. Then you do your using namespace for whatever you are doing if you need to. And then you start your own namespace implementing all the functions you had. So all the functions that you had for that one go into IO So the item that I have over here, the item.h that I have, let me blank the screen for a second. I want to hide something before I actually show it to you. So let 
So that's item.h. So I do the exact same thing for the item. What did I do? Safeguards for item.h follow the exact same rule. SDDS underline item underline h underline. Copy, change that one to define. Put the end if at the end. And then now I put all the stuff. Defined statements are only search and replaces. That's why they are extremely open to bug. Don't use defined statements. Use constant values instead. So instead of defining tax to 13, which essentially goes everywhere, look for TAX and replaces it with 013, 0.13. Instead of doing that, create a constant double variable. It's kind of an optimal type of thing. When you take constant variable, but it's a, we call it a variable, right? But when you make it constant, it you cannot change it. So tax is good to always be 0, 1, 3. We are saying over here is actually save it, it, we created a variable, but in defined we don't, correct? But any time you write 0 0.13, any literal value that you put, it occupies some space in memory. You forgot about that. If I write integer i is equal to 4, if I reuse i, I am using the same piece of memory over and over. But if I put 4 everywhere, then I have lots of literal values for 4. And if compiler is efficient enough to see they are all four and just put one of it, one for it, good. But I don't know that. If I put 900 fours everywhere, I have 900 integers. I don't know if the compiler optimizes it or not. But I don't know. Some compilers don't. Right? So it's better to reuse a variable than keep putting natural values. Don't think like programming. Anything you write in your code Gets translated to binary language. Don't think that you write over there 95, that 95, that point in there. No, it actually creates a piece of code that is totally useless. Max constant, max that defines are changed to constant. Then I put the definition of my structure for item. So any code that includes item.h knows what an item is. And then I put all the functions related to that in here. Okay? But in here, there is something you'll see. Now, I didn't write over something, and I'm going to write it soon. But when we looked at our code, and I want attention, please. Attention. Achtung. Please, listen to me. Okay. All right. Because I see people are talking. All right. Remember that we had a variable, global variable? That was the item, right? When you look at the item, item needs a global variable. The name of the variable is FPTR. What is the, the person with the microphone? Maybe? What is the type of FPTR? Pointer. Uh, loud. Pointer. What type of pointer? File pointer. File pointer. So remember, thank you. So remember, there's a file pointer. Don't give pointers like it's like writing FPTR is equal to zero. It doesn't make it there. This is the point. Are we okay with this? But we are needed wherever I'm using the item. That's what's globalized. Are we okay with this? If that's the case, how is it global now? now it is only visible in item.cpp. Remember the compiler? So the global variable is not global anymore. It's inside item.cpp only. Question is, so are the functions. Load item is only in item.cpp. Next person with the microphone. <clears throat> Load items is only in items.cpp. How come everybody can use it? How come everybody can use By it? Bypass in header file. Because it's in a header in the header file we have a prototype for it, correct? 
that prototype introduces it to everyone. Thank you to go out of order. So, <laughs> but I wanted to go to that first. But okay, so because it has a prototype, only if I could create a prototype for a variable, then I could make it globalize, right? I could globalize it, correct? I can. How do you make a variable global? You write extern and you repeat it exactly like a function. But it needs extern. So you write the exact same thing. You don't initialize it or anything because this is introduction. FPTR is not created in here. In this header file, you are just saying, hey, compiler, there is an FPTR file scope variable somewhere. Globalize it. Extern FPTR, file pointer FPTR. This becomes like a prototype for a variable and makes it visible to anyone who includes item.h. As a matter of fact, C in and C out are exactly globalized like this. We have extern O stream C out somewhere and extern I stream C in somewhere. So that's why you can actually use it anywhere you want. Okay, so this extern does that, but that brings us to something. The person with the uh, microphone. Isn't file a uh, composed, uh, 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 composed variable, uh, 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 compound variable? Yes. Yes. Is it defined? In header file. I didn't write it over here. Do you remember? A lady? The other lady. Pass it. Where file is defined? No, the file type. Which, which header file? STDIO, thank you. File is defined in STDIO. Because of that, I have to include it in this header file. So the rule I told you, do not include header file inside another unless you absolutely have to. This is one of those unlesses. So in here, I don't want to include uh, standard input output, but because of this file thingy, I have to. So I'm going to come up over here and say include CSTDIO, and that's going to give me this file. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Do we need to worry if it's going to get compiled somewhere else? No. If we know how to create safe compilation safeguard, I think those people who designed the language know it too. Because of that, every single header file that you have actually has a compilation safeguard. So you compute, include it so many times, you're going to be okay. Are we okay? Okay. The gentleman over there that I love his questions, are you okay? Because your look was like, what the heck? No, you have to include it. That's one of the beauties of C language. When I say C, I mean it's child C++ too. One of the beautiful things about C language is that it can keep its source code small if needed. Other languages who don't have this feature have everything available. Because of that, their executables and their code is big. They have to bring everything in and then use two of them. In C, you only bring what you want. Therefore, your source code becomes small. Therefore, you can put it in remote controls. You can put it in microprocessors, small little microprocessors, things like that. Okay? Yes, sir. So, is there a... oh, no, 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 no. Big crime just happened. The gentleman says, since we have included standard input output over here, we don't have to include it in item.cpt anymore. So, always treat the new file with your programming as if you have no idea what's happening in other files. If you make a mistake, don't add it over. Uh, 
problem. But if your program has a bug, and I want to debug it seven years after you wrote it, I open your item.cpp, and I look at your code, and I'll say, oh, I know why it has a bug, why it has a problem. In, uh, the header file is not included. I don't know if it, it's in item.cpp, right? Or I have to go look for it. So I have some extra work to do. Never leave anything to defaults. Do it to make sure it's not going to be a problem, OK? That's good for your health, trust me. All right, so we're good with this. All right, so, and that's that. And then now in my main item, all I need to do is to include the things I need for main, include the two modules that I have, use the namespace std, use the namespace sds, because this is a user, it's using my, and then run the program in a modular way. So somebody looks at my, it doesn't have to go through all the garbage. It simply says, there is a menu. I am showing a menu. Then I'm loading items. Then I'm printing items, printing them, and exit. Done. So they can walk through the program. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? Oh, yes. Go ahead. Never. You have a microphone, so it's like that, so people can hear. Okay. Uh, I want to know how do we know which function is in which line? Header file? Yeah. Standard one or custom one? Standard one. Uh, Google it. <laughs> but no, no, but what I'm saying is that when you learn the language, it comes with the knowledge. Oh. Yeah. No, like it's, there's no quick way to, that I can tell. So <clears throat> it's like you're buying a new car. You're saying, how do I know what are all the features in the car? There are some default ones that you know they have. You know it has a gas pedal, you know it has a brake, you know it has a steering, all the things. But does it have GPS? Does it have cruise control? All those little things you have to look for. It's not something that comes from I used to remember it. We had it passes, right? So I put that in and then you learn as you go through. When the time comes, you'll see you can guess. Because you learn the pattern of the language, and after a while, you kind of get used to how people actually wrote it. So are we good down to this point? Yes, sir. If you say struct student, it becomes type student. Yes. Okay. That's those type of languages. They don't have a type system. They're very loose. Um, um, comparing C++ to JavaScript, is, uh, JavaScript is um, a language that is written for, for the web. C++ is a language that's written for hardcore programming, for submarines and for uh, missiles and things like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for these, uh, having a language like that is extremely open-ended. You just write student, and then you start using it as you want. And the compiler, it's not a compiler. It's JavaScript as an interpreter. So it adds the features as you go. There is no You don't know what your, what your object is. what you want. Yes. And that makes the language extremely fast and efficient, unlike Java or JavaScript. OK? Yes. Do you know what S namespace is, the essence of it? Did you understand? So namespace wasn't there before in C++. It came through as the, the, the language became more complex. So they gave the feature 
namespace so you can put your stuff in namespaces so no conflict of naming happens. Are we okay down to this point? Then they said, what happens to all the things that language already had? All the class missions, functionalities that language already had, they don't have any space. What do we do? They want to put it in a namespace called standard. We call it SD. So anything that comes with the language is that used from language that's in namespace std just to so <clears throat> you can create classes name of the because now it is it's in stds namespace for example it's better not to do so but you follow right okay are we okay good with that okay any other question suggestion Objection? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see suggestion and he burst in laughter. Okay. Um, I'm not going to dismiss suggestions, my friend. I, I, I'm a very uh, liberal person in a conservative way. <laughs> All right. Are we okay? All right. So, uh, so that's that. So now we know what modular programming is. And you can do your... So that, that was essentially your lab. Right? Yeah. So, okay. <clears throat> pause, 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 pause. Something extremely important.